everybody and welcome back to the stream. It's Friday and you know what that means. It's time for functional home fitness, the class where we do weight training using objects you can find around the house. It's also week four of Rocktober for this class, which is wild. <laughs> um, I, you know, I feel like I've said this every class this week, but it's still amazing to me that we have made it almost all the way through October. Tomorrow's the last day. Um, but uh, yeah, somehow, somehow we're here. Hi, hi everybody. Welcome back. I hope you've been having a good week. Um, uh, yeah, you know, it's been a pretty good week. It's been a pretty good week, honestly. Um, there's plenty to worry about. Colorado is currently uh, in the middle of a pretty concerning COVID spike. Um, there was data that came out today that estimated that one in every 200 Coloradans is contagious with COVID right now, uh, which is just crazy. And, uh, you know, obviously if it continues, we're in a fair way to, uh, to overload our hospitals and all of the stuff that we have managed to avoid until now. So great. But uh, yeah, so wear your mask, wash your hands, please be safe. I mean, if you live here, but also if you live anywhere else, because uh, yeah, still only five. Yeah, I know, I know. Like it makes it seem really dramatic. It's still not a great thing. Like, and it's just the number, the number of people that I see sort of roaming around like telling local businesses, oh, I'm so glad that your business is picking up. And it's like, that's not a good thing. That is simply indicative of the fact that we uh, don't care about frontline workers enough to give their companies some sort of actual meaningful assistance so that they can give their employees assistance so that, you know, people don't have to be out uh, risking their lives to serve others lattes and, you know, restaurant food and all this bullshit. So I'm grumpy. Um, and, uh, you know, that's not a big change. I've been grumpy about all this stuff for a while, but it's still been a pretty good week. And that's still a very nice thing to focus on. And week four of October is also a really cool thing to focus on. Um, so if you are new to this class, <laughs> Woo, you picked a hell of a week to uh, come on board. But hi, welcome. Um, the, uh, the advisories that I give before this class, one uh, specific to the way that we do weight training here and one just more general in terms of free weight work. Um, we are doing weight training with things that are not uh, deliberately designed for that activity. You know, laundry detergent bottle, really solid weightlifting tool, but it doesn't have a nice, like, this is 15 pounds written on it the way that our dumbbells and our kettlebells do at the gym. Um, so that means that we can't load ourselves quite as deliberately as we can in the gym. So if you are new, if this is your first class, uh, err on the side of caution with any objects that you use, whether it's a bag that you're filling with books or it's your laundry detergent or, what you know a stock pot or whatever err on the side of caution in terms of the amount of weight get to know the feel of the different objects that you're using and then you know as you go through sets if you get to the end of a set and you're like okay this honestly feels way too easy i can load this up a little bit cool do that but don't go straight for the heaviest thing in your house um because that's a great way to set ourselves up for injury. And we don't like to do that. Speaking of not setting ourselves up for injury, um, whenever you're doing free weight training and loading, I, you know, human beings are not symmetrical creatures. We have stronger limbs and weaker limbs. We have more flexible joints and uh, less flexible joints. And uh, you know, this is all over the place. When we are doing free weight, uh, particularly arm exercises, and we are using multiple weights, so a weight in each hand. It's very tempting to load ourselves based on what our stronger side 
is able to reasonably manage. Um, but this is really bad for our weaker side. This is not going to help us pump our weaker side up quickly. This, uh, this is in fact going to lead our weaker side to some really unhealthy compensations to try and keep up with the amount of weight it's being asked to lift. And that again, sets us up for injury. So when you are loading yourself for free weight exercises where you have two things, uh, one in each hand, always pitch the weight towards what your weaker side can manage, what is doable but challenging for your weaker side, not what is doable but challenging for your stronger side. You want to slowly work your weaker side up to where your stronger side is, but you don't want to do that by dropping a boulder on it and going, here, catch, because that's how we hurt ourselves. So those are the advisories. Um, yeah, we've, uh, we've made it to week four. Also, if this is your first class, we've made it to week four of October, which has been going on for a while. And so there will be a little less um, discussion of, uh, prior to starting, there will be a little less demonstration and discussion of form for each of the exercises than I usually do, just because we've been doing the same program for the last four, uh, four weeks. So everybody who's been taking this for a while is uh, an old hand at it. But I'll be up here taking class alongside you, as is per usual. Um, so don't worry, you'll still be able to see what's going on. Um, and if you have questions, throw them in the chat. Woo. All right, my friends, time for that pre-class checklist. You got your water bottle, vessel, whatever it is. I've got my mason jar, which I've grown very attached to as my home workout water vessel. But, you know, since we're at home, you know, my kitchen's literally right over there. I can see it in the webcam. So I could line up a, an array of different glasses filled with water if I wanted to, and so can you. So make sure you have something holding water. Make sure you got your comfy clothes on, you've got your mat or mat sized space on the floor. Um, and if you use a fitness wearable, we're gonna turn them on now. Uh, use a strength training setting if you have one. Uh, for the rest of the classes I teach, we use um, high intensity interval training settings, but that's not appropriate for our Fridays. Hey, <laughs> well, I'm glad that you made it. I'm glad that you made it. It's so oh, well, lovely to have people in chat. Yay, chat. All right, speaking of chat, let's work out. I don't know why that was a segue, but here we are. <laughs> okay, my friends. You have checked off everything on your pre-class checklist, which means that it is time to get ourselves going. So, on your backs, on your mats, one foot crossed over the opposite knee, and as soon as you hear the timer go, we will start with our hip rocks and bridges, all right? For our usual warm-up sequence. Oh, yeah. Oh. And we're gonna, as always, slowly but steadily warm ourselves up, not reaching for maximum intensity yet, considering the rest of class, you want to save all of that energy for maximum intensity for, uh, for the rest of class. <laughs> uh, not that that was an evil chuckle or anything. I, I don't know what you're talking about. That's certainly not what I uh, just did there. <laughs> All right, fine. Maybe it was an evil chuckle, but you know what? It's almost Halloween. I feel like evil chuckles are just what you're supposed to be doing right now. Oh gosh, it is already almost dark outside and everybody remember that uh, we fall back an hour on uh, Sunday at 2 a.m. probably, I think that's usually when they do the changeover. So, uh, you know, everybody always likes to focus on, yay, we get an extra hour of time, um, which is cool, I suppose. But it also means that, you know, the sun is going to be down by like 4.30 in the afternoon, which really in my estimation is not worth that extra hour on a single day, particularly when that day is a day in the year 2020, which is just a 
a year that I look forward to uh, not having to deal with anymore. Oh man, I just had this panic moment where I was like, did I switch sides when the timer went off? Do I know where I am in the timer? But I did. <laughs> Everything's fine. It's all fine. Friends, friends, don't worry. We're fine. <laughs> I just, you know, I feel like most days I am the living embodiment of, uh, of that dog in the cartoon sitting in the middle of the flame-filled living room just sipping tea or coffee and going, yeah, this is fine. But, uh, and I think we all feel like that dog these days, um, which is, gosh, not a great way to live. Not a great way to live. Hey, uh, speaking of living and uh, of, you know, moving ourselves even slightly in the direction of a country that actually cares whether it's citizen citizenry lives or dies, uh, vote, my loves, my friends. Uh, yeah, election day, official election day, is next week, Tuesday, which is terrifying, uh, but true. So if you have not yet voted, please, please, please make your plan, figure out when you're going to go, how you're going to do it, make sure there is no chicanery going on uh, at your state government level that might make the process more difficult for you. And if there is chicanery going on of that type, then make sure you know what to do to circumvent it so that you are not disenfranchised in this, the supposed land of the free. Um, it is, yeah. And then once you have voted, and this is the important part, my friends, um, once you have voted, remember that we still have a lot of work to do, okay? Even if the election goes for Biden, which at this point, you know, I, there, are, there are plenty of conversations to have about him, but he is the candidate I am voting for. Um, but our work is not done uh, just because the election is over. Far from it. We need to really be battening the hatches and getting ready to keep holding our government's uh, feet to the grindstone. We need to keep holding them accountable for the people of this country who are ostensibly the people that they are supposed to be serving. And, you know, uh, America is a country with a lot of lofty ideals that it has never lived up to. And that is really sad and frustrating. I do believe that it has the potential to live up to at least some of them, but only if we keep on doing the work that we need to do. It's been really exciting this year to see so much more engagement in, uh, in the civic process, um, you know, both in terms of voter turnout and in terms of uh, protests and uh, at other forms of activism, you know, it is, it's amazing and it's really important work. Uh, and if you've been out there taking part in protests or uh, any other forms of activism, uh, working to get people set up to vote, you know, my, I tip my non-existent cap to you because that is really important work. Um, but it doesn't stop just because the election is over. In fact, it becomes even more important. And it's also important too, for us to pay attention to doing this work, not only at a national level, but also at a local level. Because with, with politics and with, uh, with all of these types of movements, there really is a trickle up effect. If we are electing more progressive leaders at the local level, that will start to then trickle up. And our local governments are the ones that have the most impact on our day-to-day -day lives. And so we should really be putting as much thought into who we are electing at the local level 
as we do into the presidential uh, election. So please, please, please uh, make sure you have your plan. Make sure you get your vote in, that it gets counted, that it gets accepted. Um, if you've already done all of this, congratulations and thank you. And once the election is over, we, you know, we have whatever reaction we end up having to it, and then we continue to get to work because there will be plenty more that needs to be done. Uh, so it's a good thing that we're here at class, strengthening ourselves, taking care of ourselves, and building up the strength, stamina, power, and stability that we will need to go out and change the world for the better. All right? So thank you for coming and joining me here at class. Uh, I know that this class is definitely the reason that I have uh, been able to keep my energy up uh, more effectively than I might have been able to otherwise. And uh, I hope it is doing the same for many of you. All right. Uh, time for those scorpion twists. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell, you can tell the days when you haven't been moving around nearly enough by uh, how stiff your back feels when you begin the scorpion twist. And you know, you all know me well enough to know that I have a fair degree of flexibility in most of my, uh, most of my joints and limbs, but oh, right now I'm definitely feeling, <laughs> I'm definitely feeling a little bit stiff, a little bit like I haven't been moving around all that much today. Like I really, like my body has just gone, hey, what, uh, what the heck have you been doing all day? Not, not stretching me here at all. So remember we're, still trying to slowly work our way into uh, into readiness for class. So don't feel like you need to be pushing yourself farther than your body feels like it's able to go right now. Remember, we are ramping up as always, and it's important to remind ourselves that we do not have to be at peak strength, peak speed, peak flexibility right here at the beginning of class. So the whole point of the warm up is to start getting us uh, prepared to be able to do the class, okay? The same as, you know, if we're doing any other fitness activity, if we're about to run a race, if we're about to, you know, go on a hike, play some basketball, play some soccer, what have you, we want to warm up beforehand. We want to get all of those systems online, activated, and running so that when we actually start our activity, our body and our brain go, cool, all right. Uh, I was notified that this is what we we're going to do and I have prepared myself accordingly and <laughs> I am now ready to take us through the activity, you know? So uh, keep that in mind, you know? We want to, we want to loosen ourselves up, we want to stretch ourselves out, in the, especially in this section, which is very much uh, active stretching for most of the activities, but we also want to remember always that we don't want to be shoving our body past where it can go just because we feel like we're supposed to be able to get there right now, okay? <sighs> All right. Do to do. Nice, big Samson stretches. Really sinking the hips down, really feeling the stretch in the front of that hip flexor, okay? <sighs> nice exhale can help you sink down a little bit. Remember that we're not trying to reach behind us when we raise the arms. We're trying to just reach them straight up towards the ceiling. Uh, you'll see a bend in my lower back 
that's just sort of because of the position, but uh, I'm not actively like trying to bring myself up like that, okay? So just keep that in mind as we go back and forth, keeping our hips facing forward so that they're not opening out. All right, now they can open out. Oh, there we go. We've got our nice wide squats, twisting our shoulders one at a time in towards the midline so that we get a nice twist in our upper back. Everything else is staying nice and stable. The knees are staying right over the feet. Having your hands on your knees helps that process, but if you're struggling with it, if your knees are really trying to dip in towards the center, then don't turn your feet out so far, okay? I've got my feet turned out pretty far because, again, dance training. But uh, if you're not there yet, you can turn them in a little bit. It'll be easier to keep the knees directly over the feet for this position. And you can work your way up to being able to turn out farther, okay? So always, always be aware of what your aspirational, aspirational, aspirational position is for each of these exercises. But remember that there are steps that you can move through to get there, okay? You do not have to just jump immediately into, uh, into the widest version of the squat or the biggest version of the jump. Um, you want to know what you can move through to get yourself finally to that place that you're trying to hit, okay? So always remember that we are working our way towards a goal. We don't have to be there immediately upon learning the exercise, all right? Kick throughs are another good example. So eventually, you want to be able to move relatively quickly from side to side. But there are a lot of components to the kick through. And before you get to that speed, you want to make sure that you can maintain that form. So the standing leg, knee pointing up towards the ceiling, leg at a 90 degree angle, not dropping the butt down like that, or letting the knee dip in towards the center, trying to keep the shoulder close to over the wrist, okay? And once you've mastered all of those components, then you can start to think about how do I speed up my transition from side to side? <sighs> all right, here we go. Finally, last but not least, we're here for our burpees and we're feeling good. Doing a wave push up, not a plank push up, and doing that nice big victory clap up at the top. And remember, when you do the push up, keeping those elbows right in by the body, not letting them fan out away from you, okay? That way we really focus the work in on our triceps. And just know we're almost done with the warm up and we will soon be able to rest and drink all water. All right. We good job, everybody. <laughs> uh, ooh, four inches of heavy wet snow. Yeah, Colorado is doing its perfect uh, Colorado thing, and you know we had lots of snow Sunday and Monday. 
um, and it's slowly gotten warmer all week. Today, it got up to the mid-60s, and most of the snow's already melted because that just seems to be how Colorado operates. Uh, we have now officially entered into, into winter, so fall and winter will be wrestling each other for dominance for a couple of weeks. Yeah, I, yes, I recognize that four inches of snow is a lot more usual in Boston in October than it is in uh, Colorado October. Um, so, yay, climate change. Um, Lord. Now, you know what, friends? Oh, we can do this. We can all do this. Mm -hmm. I enjoy that every time somebody references inches, oh my God, no, you need to calm down, okay? Yes, I know that you love to be the cheerleader for, uh, for the metric system, but that's what we've been taught, it's what we're stuck with right now. So let's just accept inches and move on through it. Thank you, Lars Gearhart. He was never here. All right, my friends, so here we are week four of functional home fitness for rocktober you know our exercises we've got four of them we've got goblet squats upright rows goblet lunges and lateral raises um and our lower bound is still 15 reps we've just left it there our upper bound is uh gosh at this point at this point i think it's around 45 i'm not positive but more relevant to you is I want you to add on at least five additional, actually no, this week we're, we're pushing ourselves. Try, try if you can to add on at least 10 additional reps than you did last week. It was 45 last week. Okay. So our upper bound is 55. Um, but you know what you've been doing. That's a large range, obviously. What I want you to really focus in on more than anything else is looking at what you did last week and trying to add 10 reps on top of it this week. Okay. So we've been upping the number of reps each week for the last four weeks. And this is our pinnacle. This is our culmination of reps. I know, I know you got this. You've totally got this. You're all badasses, and we're going to rock this. So everybody, Make sure you have your water bottles to hand. I'm gonna take mine with me over here. Make sure you have your equipment. I've got my usual laundry detergent bottle, backpack full of books, and a couple of additional books for our, uh, for our lateral raises. Remember, um, lateral raises, you want to be a lot more conservative on the amount of weight. You do not want to overload the shoulders on this exercise, okay? Uh, all right, my friends. So this is our, our play and go uh, set, basically. We'll be going through everything four times through, starting with those goblet squats. And as soon as you hear the horn, you have that two minute timer going and you get through your reps, and then you take the rest of the timer as rest, and then once you hear the knock, 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 you get prepped for the next exercise. But here we go, my friends. We are on the move with our goblet squats. Another thing that you can do, obviously, is up the load, um, and you know, Hopefully you've been doing that as appropriate as well. So one of the nice things about using backpacks or tote bags or any bags like that is that they are, uh, they provide us an ability to keep upping the load um, in a more strategic way. And usually when we're using setups like this, it's just gonna be the one weight 
that we are lifting with both arms. So we don't have to worry as much about what I was talking about earlier in terms of uh, overloading your weaker side. We can just really dig into holding and steering this one weight and that means that we can afford to make it a little bit heavier. And the good thing about making it heavier is that we increase the force that our legs then have to push through. And that's basically how we are managing leg exercises most of the time for, uh, for free weights. You know, when we have machines, obviously there are plenty of machines that can be set up so that the legs are actively lifting or pushing against something. When we're doing free weight exercises, we are creating additional external force that the legs then have to work through. All right, upright rows, get ready. And we're off. So make sure you're in your nice, stable position. I've got my feet about hip width apart, I would say. And I'm engaging my core and my glutes to really make sure that everything about my trunk is completely stable. The only things moving are my arms. And I'm only lifting the weight up to about chest level. You see that my elbows are staying parallel to the ground and not going much above shoulder height. It's a little awkward with the angle of my camera right now. Um, so it does, I recognize, look like I'm lifting my arms a little bit higher than I actually am. But shoulder height is our guideline for both of the arm exercises that we're doing today, actually. So just keep that in mind and remember that you're really trying to focus on controlling the weight the whole time, okay? You wanna make sure that gravity is not coming in and trying to yank the weight down, which will then pull on our shoulders. Our, you know, uh, this is a ball and socket joint, and it is unfortunately one of our most unstable uh, ball and socket joints. I was taking a CEU class the other day and had that confirmed for me. It was something I already suspected based on my own, you know, struggles with my uh, shoulder injuries, but uh, had it confirmed in a, in a CEU training. And so it is really important that we are paying attention to the safety of our shoulders, okay? At all points. We want them to be movable and flexible because that's what they're designed to do. But we also need them to develop strength and stability uh, so that when they need to hold a position or manage a heavy weight, they do not immediately get pulled out of line and just tossed about and injured, okay? So it's one of the reasons, I mean, what, mostly the reason that I focus on uh, on shoulder safety so much is my own travails with it. But it's something that many of us are not trained to think about, okay? We're not necessarily taught how to build up strength and stamina in our shoulders specifically. And, you know, so then we end up overloading ourselves with free weights or on machines or not keeping control of the weight as we move it through space. And then we end up causing ourselves injuries that we didn't need to necessarily cause ourselves because we, uh, 
because we were not taught how to strengthen and stabilize the shoulders effectively. So I like to focus on it both because of my own personal experiences and because it is an area that many of us have not really been fully trained in, myself included. I'm, you know, I am still learning plenty of things. And that's, you know, obviously my goal. I do not ever want anybody to think that I have all of this figured out because I absolutely do not. I am, my goal is to keep learning for as long as I keep teaching and to pass all of that information on to you as best as I can. So just remember, as we're here doing our lateral raises, just pay attention, don't overload the amount of weight that you're using and make sure that you are able to control the objects the whole way so that at no point are you feeling gravity just pull your arms down and yank them lower, okay? That is the most important thing for us to pay attention to. Oh, all right, we have made it through our first set of four. Hey. Don't forget to keep drinking water. It is important, even on a class like this where we're not you know, actively doing cardio, which is a really obvious way to remind ourselves that we need to drink water. Um, we still need to be rehydrating ourselves throughout class because we're still, we're still using those fluids. We're still sweating and we still need to take care of ourselves. And quite frankly, uh, we're bad at hydrating ourselves just in general. So if we can, use exercise as an opportunity to remind ourselves of the importance of drinking water, then uh, we should do it, <laughs> all right? Now that we are back here for round two of our goblet squats, let's remember, speaking of controlling the weight, we do want our core engaged as we squat down. We don't want this weight to start pulling our backs over, so I'm maintaining a nice flat back as I go down and up, and core engagement has a lot to do with that. So remember to check in and just go, okay, am I engaging my core? Am I maintaining that strength and stability in my back, or am I feeling it loosen a little bit. Am I feeling fatigue try and set in? Okay, so these are the things that we need to really pay attention to as we move along. Whew. Oh man, I tell you, these lights don't give off a lot of heat, which is good, but uh, I can still feel a bit of the difference between running this class when it's 20 degrees outside versus running this class when it's been, you know, 65 degrees outside. It's, uh, it's a little bit more intense. All right, back to our upright rows. So upright rows, if we were doing this exercise with actual free weights in the gym, um, you would be using two different weights. I would have you have a weight in each hand that you were rowing up your body rather than a single object. The reason that I do the single object approach here is because when, when we're loading ourselves with, again, equipment that we can just find around the house, it is very rare that we are going to have two things of exactly the same weight that we are able 
to use just of our household objects. And so it is easier to, when we can, modify to be using a single weight to do so, okay? So that's why I've modified my own upright rows to just use this laundry detergent bottle with the upright handle because I don't have two objects in the house that I am going to be able to, that are you know the right size and shape for me to easily grip them um, that I'm gonna be able to do that exercise with. So again, one of the things that we like to focus on this on the, in this class is just broadening our horizons, broadening our creativity in terms of what we actually need to get a good workout, all right? And uh, I promise you that you really can get an absolutely fantastic workout with nothing but common household objects, books, bags, laundry detergent. Almost all of us do laundry and almost all of us have lifted a laundry detergent bottle at some point and thought to ourselves, man, I could do weightlifting with this thing. Well, you absolutely can, okay? And uh, it is a great option in, in any circumstance, but particularly right now where a lot of us, you know, our gym may be open again, but we don't feel safe going back into it. We don't feel safe being in that environment. Um, and uh, so just broadening our horizons in terms of looking around our home and going, huh, I could absolutely, you know, grab those two wine bottles, do some curls, you know, get the laundry detergent bottle and do some tricep extensions, uh, fill that backpack with some of my books and see about doing some goblet squats. We have so many options right here at our fingertips. And the more that we open ourselves up to that, the easier it is for us to keep ourselves motivated, you know? Um, and, and the better we get at moving past our desire for the perfect setup. You know, and all of us, I think, um, I think all, if not, you know, most, if not all of us, struggle with this. We struggle with feeling like, oh, I would absolutely do the thing if only I had the perfect setup. But since I don't have the perfect setup, I obviously cannot do the thing. And what do I, what do I say to that? I say to that, that perfect is the enemy of good. And it is always going to be far better that you do something, even if it is not an ideal setup, than you take the fact that you don't have the perfect setup as a reason to do nothing, okay? So a lot of us can get really thrown when our routines go out of whack. And I absolutely understand that. And there are plenty of reasons for that. Um, one of the tools that you can use is really, really trying to focus in on that creativity, on seeking and finding ways to modify. Okay, we talk about exercise modifications all the time. You know, if I have an injury, what can I do instead of this exercise that is going to work similar muscle groups in a similar way, okay? And that's what we're doing with a class like this. We're modifying, okay? We're not able to be in the gym right now with our racks and racks of dumbbells and kettlebells. So we've modified. We've found objects that can serve a similar purpose and 
are doing the exercises. Okay? So, yeah, keep that in mind, my friends, because we can all, you know, we get thrown off our routines and then we find it really difficult to restart and then we pull ourselves into spirals of shame and I absolutely understand all of that. And let's, let's be frank, I have gone through all of that with my own exercise routines. I, I have had all of those boom bust cycles where I've, you know, had something get in the way of my normal routine and I couldn't figure out how to motivate myself to change it up. And so I just fell away from exercise completely. And then I felt really guilty because I wasn't doing this thing I was supposed to be doing. And, you know, before you know it, I spent far more time castigating myself than, uh, than I spent actually exercising. And, you know, shame is never uh, an emotion that I want you to try and use for motivation, okay? It is, it's not how I teach. I absolutely despise the boot camp style of fitness instruction, yelling at people to, uh, to shame them into going faster, harder, stronger. I do not believe that that is in any way a useful approach to training people. Um, I want you to find, to find the ways that you can get yourself moving even if it's not what you envisioned it was going to be, okay? So if you're having a bad day for depression or anxiety and really just not able to get up off of the chair you're sitting in uh, to put on exercise clothes and do a whole class, then just try to stand up and sit down a few times, okay? Just try to maybe do five jumping jacks and then sit back down, you know? Break it down, not into manageable chunks, but just into something small enough that it's not overwhelming, all right? Because we spend so much time shaming ourselves for what we think we should be doing. And it is, it's not healthy. It's not good for us. And, you know, apart from the fact that rest is just as important as our exercise routine is the fact that our mental health is just as important as our physical health. And if we're over here shaming ourselves for our, uh, for our lack of exercise, then we're actively negatively impacting our own mental health, okay? And that's not good. And you know, sometimes it can be really hard to pull ourselves out of those spirals. Just try and think, try and think when you're in that space, when you are sitting in a chair and it feels like it's a prison, just try to stand up and then sit back down again, okay? That's just once, just once, not even multiple times. Just try to do it once and if you succeed, see what you can do after that. Maybe you can stand up and walk to the kitchen and get yourself some water. Or maybe you can do a couple of additional reps of standing and sitting. Or maybe you go, okay, I made it out of the chair once. I absolutely have the ability to <laughs> go put on exercise clothes and take class. Or maybe you go, all right, that was as much as I had in me right now. I'll try again in a little bit 
and see if I'm able to stand up and sit down again, okay? All of those are great. All of those, absolutely. And all of them are far healthier for us than sitting there and shaming ourselves for uh, what we feel like we're supposed to be accomplishing and not accomplishing, okay? So there you go. There's my, there's my lecture on not beating ourselves up. Exactly, it is. It's motivation, but not healthy motivation. It's not sustainable, okay? It's not sustainable. And those of us with anxiety on ADHD spectrums, you know, with any sort of neurodivergence that can make it difficult to fall into the patterns that uh, society has laid out as typical, um, it can be a far too frequently utilized uh, motivational tool. And it's hard because when the, when the person doing the shaming is your own brain, it's like, well, crap, I can't really escape from that. Like, how do I, how do I get away from it? So, and there's no easy answer, but part of it is trying to take deep breaths and trying to hold our brains with kindness rather than with shame. And if they're trying to use shame to motivate us, trying to take that step and go, okay, what is it that is causing me fear that is leading me to shame myself for X, Y, or Z? Is there a deadline that I'm afraid I'm not going to meet? Is there a person that I'm afraid I'm letting down? Oh, you know, do I have this image of uh, childhood traumas or, you know, all of these different possible reasons. Just try and breathe, take a step back and dig in to find the root cause. Because shame is frequently, it's a symptom. It's not a root cause. Same with jealousy. Um, it is frequently a symptom that there is some need that you have that's not being met. So rather than attacking the symptom, taking the time to dig into what is the root cause causing that symptom will help us to then identify the source of the issue and hopefully be able to uh, build out a better and healthier solution for us going forward. This all got very heavily into mental health today, but you know what? There's never a bad day to dig into mental health. It is a topic that we, we discuss far too infrequently. We still have a lot of totally unfair and unnecessary stigma surrounding it. And uh, the more that we can do to normalize discussion of mental health, the better, the easier it will be for us to find ways to manage and treat, or treat it, okay? And keeping in mind too, that frequently mental health issues can be caused not only by internal you know, brain chemistry and all that stuff that we hear over and over again, but by our life circumstances, by our, uh, our societal struggles, you know? It's hard to move through depression when you feel stuck in a dead-end job that you don't feel like you can leave because you need the money. It's hard to, you know, manage your anxiety when you're in the middle of a global pandemic and watching 
the leaders in the country that you live in just clearly not caring if you live or die. So keep that in mind too. You know, there are some of us who have dealt with mental health issues um, all our lives. And in some ways I feel like we have a little bit of a leg up um, because we've, you know, many of us have done that initial work into learning how to deal with it. But all of us are going through such intense times right now. Even if you have dealt with uh, mental health issues uh, throughout your life, this is still a really hard time for all of us. And it can be even harder when you never did have any issues that you were aware of and suddenly you are feeling anxious all the time. You are feeling sad and depressed all the time. You're having that brain fog, that difficulty concentrating, all of that stuff. And that can feel really scary and overwhelming when you've not ever experienced it before. So all of us need to be gentle with ourselves right now because we are all in the middle of a huge minefield of circumstances that are tailor-made to cause us stress and anxiety and depression and sadness and grief and all of this stuff. We're all in the thick of it right now. And we need to take care of each other and we need to take care of ourselves. We need to be graceful with ourselves, be kind to ourselves so that we are not constantly overcome with the weight of everything that we're dealing with, okay? And I say all this recognizing easier said than done most of the time, but sometimes just hearing that out loud can be the initial push that we need to really dig forward, you know? And uh, sometimes we need that external voice to remind ourselves that it's okay to be kind to ourselves. It's okay to be graceful with ourselves, to be calming and not trying to uh, shame ourselves or feel like we are failing in some way. <sighs> Look, it's hard. It's hard out there for all of us. So please try to be kind to yourself because we are our own best critics and our own worst enemies a lot of times. Uh, oh, Amanda, I'm so sorry. Denial of mental health issues and denial that things are reasonably worsened by the current situation is just mind-blowingly myopic, but I'm sure you don't need me to tell you that. I, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and it's remarkable. Humans have a great and a uh, documented ability to ignore things or to uh, talk ourselves out of knowing things that we know. <laughs> um, and it is a little terrifying when we start to see that in action with friends, coworkers, loved ones. Um, when we start to see the ways in which we cl clamp down on our curiosity, on our willingness to explore, to learn new things, to take in new information and adjust our worldviews accordingly, to, you know, meet the world with 
kindness and curiosity rather than cementing ourselves into these us versus them mentalities and you know assuming that we know everything and that we are obviously so much smarter than others because we're less emotional or something um, you know I'm in my mid 30s now and I'm at that point where I am seeing friends you know people of my own generation start to hit those back in my day points and like oh wasn't everything so much better in this mythical past that never existed except we like to think that it did because when we were kids we didn't have the responsibilities that we do now and it's scary it's scary to watch it um so all i can say is ch i challenge you to never lose your sense of curiosity to never shut yourself away from taking in new information and broadening your worldview to be kinder and more generous oh my goodness my friends i need some water that was a lot of lecturing <laughs> sometimes <coughs> you drink water too quickly and it goes down the wrong pipe all right <coughs> Jeez, I'm falling apart here friends it's all right it's Friday so let's just do a quick stretch out of the main things so let's shake our hands out a little bit shake our feet out a little bit shake our whole arms let the shoulders get in on that action let our hips get into it this is our shake around and now let's swing our arms <coughs> back and forth we're not trying to you know shove them back and forth with a lot of power just letting them go back and forth like this and then we're going to take one arm out to the side across our chest grab it with the other hand right above the elbow, pull it into our chest, and just get that stretch along the tricep. Some breaths there. You'll probably notice one side feels this stretch more than the other. Again, we are not symmetrical creatures as much as we wish we were. All right, and release. Shake them back and forth a little bit, <clears throat> and then the other side oh yeah my left arm is the one that really loves this stretch uh much better nice just a few breaths especially if this is a side that you feel the stretch on more hmm. okay and let's pull our Heel up to our butt, we're gonna do a standing quad stretch. So if you need the balance assistance, absolutely put your hand on something nearby. You can also do this just, you know, balancing on one foot and stretching the other leg. Um, but if your balance is not that secure, I would rather you focus on the stretch than on the balance. So hang on to, a, hang on to something. Just pull that heel in as close as you can, okay? Let that down. Let's do the other side. Oh, yeah. Oh, pulling that in. Feel that nice stretch. Even for those of us who do have good balance, like, if I have good balance, I still like to just have a hand on something because then I can really just focus in on the stretch. Let's fold over the top of our feet. Just feel that stretch going up the top of the foot and up along the shin, okay? And you can go back and forth and just stretch each side out a couple times, okay? Now let's do a calf stretch, so our usual Imagine there's a wall in front of me and I'm going to step one leg back behind me, straight leg, 
and I'm driving that heel down to the floor and I want to feel that stretch along the calf. So if you just need to come back here and you really feel that stretch, cool, you don't have to go any further. If you're here and you still don't feel a stretch, try and push back even further. If you can't quite get your heel down, but you think this is where you want to be for the stretch, that's where the wall comes in handy. Pressure against the wall helps you to push the heel down, drive it into the floor, and keeping that leg straight so that you still have that calf stretch, okay? And we're just holding ourselves up against the wall. Yeah, nice deep breaths as with everything. And then step forward and go back on the other side. And you may need to adjust around a bit to find the right place for this stretch, okay? And that's totally fine, totally fine. Oh, much better, okay. You know I'm gonna bring us down to the mat really quickly. I'm feeling the desire for one more stretch. So let's bring our feet together let our knees fall open into a nice butterfly pose okay and what we're going to do is we want to fold over the feet so that we can get a nice stretch in our hips and in our inner thighs but i don't want you to just sort of roll over and fall over because what's going to help us increase the stretch is getting our lower back down towards the legs so I want you to try and take a flat back position and walk yourself forward in that flat back as far as you can and then let the upper back curve over so that it's still pulling the lower back down a little ways as well, okay? And then you'll feel a much deeper stretch in the hips, all right? So get that nice flat back. Let's walk forward, let our heads drop forward, and we're folded over our feet. And we're just gonna take four deep breaths here. And each time you exhale, just try and drop yourself down a little deeper into the stretch. All right, here we go. That's one. That's two. That's three. And four. And push ourselves back up. Just let these knees sort of flap like a butterfly. Again, you'll probably notice which hip is more flexible and which hip is less flexible. I certainly do. My left hip, my, my knee drops almost entirely onto the ground without any issue, where my right side stays a little bit higher up. So <clears throat> again, it's not that we are ever going to be perfectly symmetrical creatures. Um, it's just important for us to understand where our particular asymmetries lie. Again, so that we can modify where we need to so that we are lessening the chance of injury, okay? All right, and let's just do one more. Let's stretch these feet out in front of us, nice and straight along the mat, feet gently flexed, and we're just gonna reach out towards our feet and fold ourselves over our legs. Now, I want you to take a hand and shake out the quads. You don't want to be clenching the quads here, okay? You want all of these muscles to be relaxed so that they can more easily lengthen and stretch. This is a, a stretch that's really focused on the hamstrings, but having our quads engaged and tightened is a pretty good sign that we're doing the same thing with our hamstrings. So, make sure that you're still able to shake 
those muscles loosely. And again, four deep breaths. Here we go. That's one. That's two. That's three. And four. And up. Shake those knees out a little bit. Oh, and I think that that is it, my friends. Da, da, da. Chat's been blowing up since I've been over there. Oh, God. Yeah. You're all ready for another circuit. I know it's the weird thing about, uh, about um, the Friday class is it really is like a play and a press play and then just let the whole thing ride out. Um, I'm going to be playing around with the structure of this class a little bit going forward. Um, I think there's, there's room for some expansion, some, uh, some additional creativity here. And so I want to, I want to see what I can build out, but, uh, obviously we've been keeping things the same for, uh, for functional home fitness rocked over. Yeah. Uh, the election is itself a pandemic. It's so true. Oh my God. So many glossy flyers every day. I have thrown out so many flyers. Oh, they just, they just keep showing up. And I'm like, you're wasting so much paper. There are other ways to reach out to people. Ah, you got your head to your feet this time. Yes, congratulations. Oh, I am so proud. I like, not of the flyers, it's really annoying, but I'm so proud of you. That is so exciting. And that's, that's our goal, right? That's what we're going for is trying to just, just feeling how much we've, we've improved is so awesome. So congratulations, give yourself all of the pats on the back for that. And know that, you know, if it wasn't a pandemic and we were in the same meat space, I would give you a hug. <laughs> um, but I give you many internet hugs instead. Oh, all right, my friends, this was the end of Rocktober for Functional Home Fitness. Next week, we are going to do the programs one more time, we're going to do the original version of them again so that everybody can really get that clear sense of how far you've come over the last four weeks. So just like going back to these programs in their easiest state and seeing how it feels, right? So we're going to be doing that next week. And then I promise we will be doing all new things. <laughs> and uh, I know that you'll be as excited uh, as I am for that. But uh, I think right now feels pretty good. So one more class this week and it's tomorrow, Halloween. And it's, uh, what is that class? The weekend kickoff, I remember my classes. The weekend kickoff, our awesome strength and stamina focused body weight class. It's closing out October, it's closing out Rocktober. Um, and I, I don't know how costumed I will be, but I will wear at least something in honor of Halloween. So uh, if you want to come to a nice, awesome morning class, wear a little bit of costuming, have a little bit of fun with it. None of us are having the Halloween we imagined, but that doesn't mean that we can't make ourselves smile. Um, so yeah, please show up. Honestly, conservative folks who don't want to think they're conservative, that happens a lot in super blue states. Uh, Hawaii has huge issues with that too. Um, and uh, I think there's, there's a lot of, uh, yeah, it's one of the reasons why I generally try to label myself as an independent rather than uh, a Democrat because of that awareness of the fact that Democrat does not automatically mean progressive um, in any way. But uh, yeah, this year, full-size candy bars. Oh yeah, 100%, 100%, oh my God. All right, my friends. So one more class this week, it's tomorrow. 
we're gonna be filled with candy um, or fill ourselves with candy after class. That's the beauty of class. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All of those handles will be in my end cards, but they are all variations on Blanche Case Fitness. Uh, my YouTube channel, yay, you can make it tomorrow, awesome. Um, my YouTube channel, Blanche Case Fitness, is where I store all the VODs for these classes and where a lot of supplemental materials gonna start going up, uh, form videos and uh, stretch sequences and warm up sequences, and stuff like that. So head over there and subscribe if that's your jam. Um, fill this man with candy. I, <laughs> I can't, you're in, you're halfway, you're all the way across the country. Um, if you would like to help support me financially in making these streams, I do have a coffee account. Donations are always very much appreciated. Um, and if you want to help me keep growing this channel, get us to a uh, Twitch affiliate. What a great Halloween slash Christmas present that would be. Um, please do follow this channel. Tell your friends, tell your loved ones, tell your coworkers, anyone who's looking for a good workout online. Um, love these classes and uh, yeah, can't wait to do more. So thank you all for spending your evening with me. Awesome. Awesome class, awesome closeout to this class is for October. And I will see at least one of you tomorrow morning. Mwah. Have a great night.